One of the greatest lotteries in life is what you're born into. What do you make out of the ingredients you're given? I'm starting my journey here in a region of China known for its ancient water towns and referred to by many as the Venice of the East to explore areas of the country that have become part of China's living history. A civilization 5,000 years old, China has produced a culture that is considered one of the oldest still extant in the world. This is especially evident in Chinese ancient towns, where the past is not only present, there is also a wealth of intangible cultural heritage waiting to be discovered. I'm George Young. As an actor and writer, I've spent my career under the guise of others. But I've been living at the crossroads of different identities and cultures my entire life. Half Greek Cypriot and half Malay Chinese, this unconventional blend sometimes spurs questions as to who I am. And that's what I'm here to find out. Why don't you use electric tools here? I'm traveling across the breadth of China, returning to my roots, to places, some for the very first time. To experience a life that in many ways is just as it once was. I felt like I was in Europe. In order to reconnect with my Chinese heritage. Oh my God. I'm traveling across China to reconnect with my roots. My next destination is Shupai, a place known as Tofu Town to uncover the origins of this Asian delight. Here you can find tofu of all kinds of different shapes and sizes. You've got bai dofu, which is the fresh tofu you might be more familiar with, dogan, which is a dried tofu, or dobi, which is a top layer or skin of the tofu. It's the sheer variety of tofu on offer here that makes this town unique. Today, tofu and its derivative products have become common foods, not only for the Chinese, it has also been exported overseas to countries like Korea and Thailand, making it popular around the world. But staying a step ahead, Sherpai locals have diversified and turned tofu into a delicacy. I've come to a restaurant where their tofu dishes showcase a variety of local knowledge and creativity. What's this one then? Fen zheng dou xi. It looks special because it's been placed on the middle of the table. Special dish. Fen zheng dou xi. 里面夹的是肉 Okay. Very savory taste. Obviously, you've got the meat in there. And that combination of the skin, the tofu skin, the dou xi, with that meat inside. This is soy dou gan. It looks like that uh, martial arts coat, that waterproof coat. Jinjiang dou pi. This is Jinjiang. This is dou pi. So together it's Jinjiang dou pi. Immediately just looking at it, it reminds me of Peking duck. Oh yeah, it's got a bit of spice to it. Mm -hmm. That's really nice, yeah. Tofu making has been part of Shupai's history for centuries and has even enabled the town to survive through tough times, past and present. Today, almost 30% of its residents are tofu makers. I'm going to uncover the secrets of making good tofu with 57-year-old Wang Mingzhong who carries three generations worth of this culinary heritage. So when did you start making tofu? 
我一九八三年就做这个豆腐。我以前是做那个散装豆腐的，后来呀，这不是超市多了吗？我就回来就做包装，可以上超市，老百姓都可以买到。How much tofu do you make each year? 一天做几百斤豆腐。我现在的家里啊，做黄豆的话要做几几千斤。That's definitely larger scale. How long do we soak the beans for? Now the weather is about five hours. I don't have five hours. Is there anything we've prepared earlier? Can we do that? This is prepared. Put this first. Thankfully, Master Huang has some pre-soaked beans. Now it's time to grind them. But he's not going to let me take the easy way out. 这个黄豆都是用这个机器磨的，现在，我让你体验一下我们小时候磨的那个。You want me to use that one? All right. I see what you're doing. He wants me to work hard. 小时候做这个是好玩呐。Come on, let's do this. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's hard. I'm already tired. Okay. Can I can I try some of this? Can you just come on? Can you? Okay. Just try. It's in the tea. That's all right. It's okay. It's all right. There's a nice natural taste to it. It's not too bad. I like it. What's your one? Look at this. It looks like a cloud in a bucket. I mean, I just want to jump in there. If I jump in there now, will I look younger if I stay in there for about three hours? Yeah. 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 <laughs> The next few steps are the most crucial, as they directly affect the taste and texture of the tofu. This is just starting to mix it. This is the ground in the middle. I see. So you're mixing it together like that. This is the process of mixing the gypsum and the soybean milk together. This is ground up. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Like. 把这个盖盖上，等一会就好了。How long does it take for it to? 五分钟。五分钟。That's really quick. Okay. While we wait for the gypsum to take its course, it gives me a chance to find out about the local tofu customs and traditions from Mr. Huang. 豆浆，你看看好不好喝，香不香？嗯。嗯。I love that when it's completely natural. You don't add any sugar. That's exactly what I like. 我们小时候就。喝这个豆浆，你喝了就高兴的很。Yeah. And what about um tofu itself? 七八岁的时候，那时候我们家里啊做豆腐啊，都是逢年，就是过年的时候，每一家都打豆腐，打豆腐弄出来豆浆，你想去喝一点呢，喝一点，爷爷奶奶就不让你喝。那时候豆腐就是过节的时候才有，一般是买不到的。It is surprising to know that tofu was once a precious food to Mr. Huang. Even though tofu is widely available today, Mr. Huang still takes pride in the tofu he produces. It's time to check if every batch will make it to the market, especially the rookie batch I made. How can you tell that it's a good batch of tofu? If the water is too much, it doesn't taste good. If the water is too much, it tastes bad. So bad tofu, when you cut open the tofu, when you slice the tofu, it's very watery. But good tofu, like here, you have a slight golden color from that soybean, I guess. And you can see that here, that sort of almost like an aura of gold around the tofu here. Taste test time. Wow. I think it tastes nice, but I'm a bit biased because I had a small hand in making this. Can you try it as well to see how we've done? Mm. 
Zeg ik het goed? Dat is goed. Oké. Is there a family secret? Is there no secret recipe I can steal? Meijin Huang de da Huang duo zhe shi ge du shi yong chen chen de ken ni zhi yong mi fan de. And you won't tell me that exact amount. <laughs> you, tell, you can tell me secret. Tell me secretly later. Okay, later on. <laughs> The hard work of Sherpai locals like Mr. Huang has turned this humble dish into an everyday culinary delight. The smell, the taste, lingers in my memories, making it a real culinary heritage in my book. Situated in the hinterland of Sichuan, southwest of China, my destination is a town called Lijiu. Literally translated as the town of righteousness, this light tower at the highest point of town became an emblem of that spirit. It was erected towards the end of the Ming Dynasty out of concern for the safety of merchants traveling at night. This light continues to shine in the heart of its people. Seventy-three-year-old Wang Dengbang is a second-generation practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine. Today. He continues to embody the Lijiu spirit by caring for its people through the use of this ancient practice. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Be a jin jang. Really? Zhong Yi Kan Bing Hen Zi Ran. Zhong Yi Shi Li Yong Zhe Gao Zi Ran Gui Lu. Ji Hu Ren Ni Shen Ti Ni Bie Hua. Okay, so I shouldn't be nervous. You're gonna just check my balance in my body then? How are you gonna do that? Can you show me? First, Dr. Wang takes my pulse. Shi uh, Tai. You check the heart rate on both hands then. Li Zhe Gao Shen Qi, Jiben Shan Jian Kang, Mei De Da Ni Wen Qi, Zhishi, Yu Yi Der Qin Wei Ni Feng Zhi. Traditional Chinese medicine includes various mind and body practices, such as acupuncture, and cupping. I, on the other hand, need a remedy of herbs to cool my body. It's a lot. Okay, and this is this is what again? It's a teaching talk. Plantain leaves. So about 10, 10 grams we need. All right. And how much is this right now? Oh, wow. You're really good at this. Oh, I just grabbed it, didn't I? I just put it on the thing. We've, we've immediately got what we need. Perfect. I love it when that happens. The herbs are cut into smaller pieces and brewed. While the mixture is simmering, Dr. Wang shares with me stories that tie Li Zhou's spirit to his father's practice in medicine. So your, your father was a traditional Chinese medicine doctor as well. What were your earliest memories then? Mm. So you started learning this tradition when you were 15 years old. Well, who taught your dad then? Ye Mong Bei Lan is from Guangzhou area. This Li Zhou Lan, he came and he opened this Yao Pu. He came and he taught his son Ye Jinyong. He also taught him to study. My father also taught him to study. Qin Zhong Gui Mei Chen Li Yi Qian. Every year, he taught Qin Chang Yu. Liu Gan 
，夜梦被就熬起大锅汤，摆在家门口，就是这个药铺的门口，免费送给这些没得钱治病的人。我父亲和我四伯他们都免费的送药给他们治疗。So it sounds like your whole family and also who they've learned from, you all continued that philanthropy. Dr. Wang and his family continues Li Zhou's spirit of generosity, extending the practice of traditional Chinese medicine to benefit people from all walks of life. All right, let's try this. Myself included. Finally, the herbal concoction is ready. All right, try this. Cheers, can be. Hmm. Oh, it tastes like um, tea. It tastes like a herbal tea. It's very nice. Traditional Chinese medicine is very much a reflection of the Chinese way of thinking and living. To connect with nature, to restore balance to the mind and body. This millennia-old practice is not only still relevant in today's China, it's grown in popularity, helping people across the world. I'm in Nguantren, northern China, to experience a tradition that has lasted for almost 500 years. Nguantren thrived thanks in no small part to the blacksmiths who set up shop here to take advantage of the region's natural mineral deposits. It was their inventiveness that led to an attraction as appealing to watch as it is dangerous to perform. The blacksmiths in Nguantren have created a unique way of celebrating Chinese New Year, called Da Shuhua, or Iron Molten Fireworks. Wang De is a 13th generation Da Shuhua performer who has been practicing the art for over 30 years. Mr. Wang. Hello. Hey, yeah. Wow, I like your outfit. Hey, you are, you are. I like your outfit. I like your outfit. I like your outfit. You're throwing molten iron at a hey. wall. That sounds crazy. <laughs> Does it just, I suppose it just looks spectacular then, I guess. Why do you do that? Because when the rich people were in the past, when the rich people were in the past, the rich people, 在这个平时，因为我们这个住宅要比较发达，那个匠人们在平时干活的时候，那个铁水掉在地下，迸溅出那个金花，挺好看。后来这个匠人们就尝试着，能不能把它泼洒在城墙上，看看好看。The blacksmiths discovered that throwing molten iron ore at a wall created a similar effect. But does this, does this outfit that you're wearing then? How does it protect you? This Right, okay, so it's fire retardant. This uh -huh. Look, this Oh, I just saw, yeah. Look, this is very Look, this is very important. Look, this is very So, molten iron falls on you, it burns through your protective gear, it burns your flesh, why do it? Why do it? So it's a, it's a tradition that you're carrying on. So it's a Thank you. Whoa. Nice, I'm trying on. Nice. 
Okay, so we're just practicing with water. Good, because I didn't really believe you that this was enough for molten iron. Excellent. Okay. All right. Where should we practice? This way. Okay. Okay. So this is the spot we're going to practice. So is this the actual spoon you use on performance day? This is the spoon we Oh, it's it's willow tree. It's made out of willow tree. 对对，在打以前，用水把它浸泡三天三夜，里边全部浸上水以后，在打的时候再用火把那个外表烤干，因为那个温度特别高，你不烤干以后，它一挨着那个铁水就要爆炸。I would never have thought something made of wood would be able to withstand that sort of temperature, and, and molten iron in this spoon. Right, so we're going to practice with water today, right? Not molten iron. Can you show me? Okay. Right. So just from up like that. So from down like that. No? Yes. Da Shu Hua is a dangerous game that brings together a select group of daredevils. And I'm going to have to prove my worth if I'm to join the club. Da Shu Hua is an ancient tradition that is beautiful but highly dangerous. I've come to northern China to experience this art form, but I'm baffled by the performer's dedication to a tradition that can have deadly consequences. So you're all the Da Shu Hua team? You're all Da Shu Hua, right? Yes, yes. This is the Da Shu Hua master. This is a master. Hi. Hi. I'm the Wu Xin de Da Shu Ren. I'm the new team member. <laughs> uh, but I've noticed, I, I feel like you all seem experienced. You look all very experienced. I'm happy to say, I think I'm the youngest one here, aren't I? Where are all the young, the young guys and girls doing this? Yeah, well, we're Oh, right. So you use these both here to pour the molten iron into this? Yes, to How long does it take to prepare this stove so it's hot enough to melt iron? Then, we don't have a lot of time to use this. We use 40 minutes to use 40 minutes. The stove is added to 1600 degrees. After the stove is added, so it takes about 40 minutes to melt the iron, to prepare the stove. Okay, so we put it in here. Then we put it in here, put it in here, and put it in here. Okay, so now we put it in here. Okay, so now we put it in here. Safety is imperative. The tools of the trade must be checked prior to every performance. The furnace containing molten iron is often damaged from the heat and needs to be repaired before the troop can use it again. How, does, how do you do this? Okay. So you apply this clay. It's like clay, isn't it? You're putting it on the stove. Oh, right. So every time you put that onto this, that and the high temperature, it causes it to crack, and you need to apply this to fix it. I see. Oh, wow, look how quickly it dries to this temperature. How oh, quite gone. With hours left to the performance, it's all hands on deck to make sure nothing is left to chance. Da Shu Hua is a game for the brave. 
wrangling melted iron at temperatures of up to 1600 degrees Celsius, any mistake could be fatal. Okay, so I'm almost, yeah, great, yes, of course, I need this, I almost forgot. So, are we all ready to go? But that's where the, it's too dangerous, but, but that's, well, uh, okay, but if you need me, just call me, okay? Okay, well, before we go, um, can I just do like just a little good luck thing for you guys, if we just all put our hands together? Can we just put our hands together? Yeah, here we go. Okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Hi, sorry. Sorry. Now it's time for the highlight of the night. It's like a meteor shower taking place in front of my eyes. In a span of 10 minutes, the night sky is lit up by molten iron bursting into sparks as they splash onto the wall. Once a poor man's firework, now more mesmerizing than any I've seen, due to the hard work and courage of one and his team. This is really something, it's like, They've grabbed the stars from the sky, put it into a bucket, and thrown it against a wall. My family have often said to me, life is what you make it. Now there's a superficial and deeper meaning to that saying. I found both apply to the China I've explored. People like Mr. Huang and his tofu, Mr. Gu and his silk. They've not only made a living out of what the land's provided for them, they're all part of a bigger picture, a community that's bonded and thrived together. It's the resourcefulness of a people that were born here centuries ago, in ancient towns like these, that sowed the seeds of a modern nation.